Hello and welcome. As you already know, my name is Alphonse and I'm a certified Feldenkrais practitioner. Are you familiar with the work of Edmund Jacobson? Do you happen to know Edmund Jacobson and the Jacobson progressive relaxation technique? Jacobson introduced his work in 1908 in Harvard University and published his first book in 1929. It was called Progressive Relaxation. And if you know this work and you like this work, you will love this lesson today. Ah, by the way, Jacobson was the guy who invented the word relax or the use of the word relax to relax in the sense of releasing tension, become less tense, more <laughs> more relaxed, it didn't exist by then, but more at ease, less anxious, less stressed. For us it's a normal word, relax, but it was invented by this guy, so you know what's up. So this lesson today, it enhances it a little bit. You will, if you love the relaxation techniques, uh, you will be surprised by the creativity of this lesson, by the craftsmanship that went into the lesson by Dr. Moshe Feldenkrais and I hope to present it today in a good way so you get the most out of it. Ah, very excited for this, let's get right to it. Welcome to this relaxation session. Please lie down on your back in a comfortable place. Shut your eyes if you're comfortable doing so. Begin by taking a deep breath and notice the feeling of air filling your So, as always, first arrive at the floor. Make yourself comfortable. Just feel how you are on the floor. Is that important? I don't know. For me, I love coming down on the floor. Yeah, it's me time. Ah, relax. All right. How to relax? In the progressive relaxation, there's a contraction of muscles and then a release. And that's the same here, but we don't do isometric contractions. Not necessarily what Jacobson did, but they are. Uh, but we do small movements, very tiny movements, like with the eye movements in the last bonus lesson. You move the eyes a little bit and then you let go again. You look somewhere and then you stop looking and then you look somewhere else and you stop looking. So there's a, a slight tension in the eyes and then it's relaxation again. So it's this, this a change of slight, very little contraction and a more neutral position. This back and forth between tension and relaxation which will do its effect in overall relaxation. So the first movement, you just you can spread your legs out. If that's not comfortable, you can stand your legs. But the, in the original lesson, it's with the legs long. And just try to lift your head a tiny little bit. The head. You just lie with your arms wherever you want, your legs wherever you want them. And you just lift the head a tiny little bit. And here's the first cul culprit, the first difficulty. Don't do much. Just a tiny little bit, just uh, uh, and then let go again. It's tiny. It's not lifting and then let go again, but it's less than that. Mm. So there's many images for that. For example, imagine you're lying on a piece of paper with your head and you just lifted your head far enough so, so that somebody can take out that piece of paper or slide a cushion under your head. Or you can imagine you have your head on a scale, bathroom scales. So maybe your head weighs five kilo or 10 pounds, I don't know how much. And then you just make it so it only the, the scales only show half or 50% of that, like 
two kilo or maybe one pound or half a pound or less or a little bit more. So it's just a tiny, tiny, tiny little lift of the head. Tiny. And let go again. Yeah. Oh, and this might be strenuous. Or lift it half an inch, but don't be seduced to lift it 10 inches. Or 10 centimeter, or one centimeter is enough, just a little bit. And then relax again. So there's tension. You can feel it in your neck, of course, but also in your chest. And let go again. And then we add something. Instead of just lifting the head, think of your spine. Think that your spine becomes long. Hmm? That the spine doesn't contract and shorten when you lift the head, but your spine lengthens, lengthen, like woo, longer when you lift the head just a tiny bit. <laughs> I already did too much. Just a tiny little bit, lift the head a tiny little bit, and then let go again. And always take a rest in between. So it's it's not something strenuous. It's just a small movement and resting again. Be prepared for a very relaxed lesson. Just lift the head a little bit and let go again. Now also think of your breathing. How do you breathe? Hmm, how? Yeah, in, out. But at what point is there? Do you hold your breath when you? Lift your head, lengthen your spine. Do you lift your head on an out breath or on an in breath? Or is there no connection with the, your breathing at all? Try to observe that. You can hold your head uh, for a bit if you like and then let it sink down again. And then with your right hand get hold of some of your hair on top of your head. So for me that doesn't work because I had a haircut just yesterday and there's not much hair to grab to. So if you're in the same situation you just hold your head, you guide your head a little bit and help with your right hand to lift the head a little bit and lengthen. So if you have hair, just hold the hair very gently and pull a little bit on the hair. So it's like you're pulling your spine long and make it short again and lower your head and take a rest. And then again, lift your head with the help of your hand. Just grab a tiny little bit of hair just to guide your head. It's not really a lift. And let go again. If that's possible for your right shoulder. If not, you can hold your hand somewhere. Just what, what's possible. So you, you, feel, you, you should feel comfortable. You should feel very fine here and lift a bit. And let go a bit and then do the same thing with your left hand. Bring your left hand on top of your head and grab some hair, two hairs <laughs> and lengthen your spine, help the head lift and then let it go back down again. And then take a rest. Just let everything come down on the floor. Your legs long, your arms long alongside of your torso. Just rest a little bit. And then think of your right elbow and start lifting your right elbow a little bit with your right arm alongside your torso. Just lift the right elbow a tiny, teensy little bit and let go again. 
And again, lift the right elbow a tiny little bit, doesn't even lift off much, and back down again. And if you did my previous lessons in this course, what was it, like 10 lessons? You will already feel a lot, like the arm has weight, and if you lift your elbow, this weight needs to go somewhere. It needs to be supported, or there's a reflection of this movement in the whole body, not only in your breathing, of course, but in, in, your whole, in, the, whole, in the shape of your body, if you can feel that. Lift and let go. I, I'm just pointing out that that's something you could feel. You could feel your entire spine shifting towards your right elbow if, if you're relaxed. And if not, you can imagine it. But the next thing we want to imagine is the right elbow not only lifting, but being pulled to the right. So think of your right elbow being pulled to the right. So we give this lift of the elbow a direction. Direction of being pulled. Ah, can you feel? Oh, it, this goes far, this goes deep. It's not just lifting the elbow, but the elbow like pushing. You, actually, you push the elbow out to the right, but think of somebody dragging or pulling your elbow, your right elbow, just a little bit to the right and let go again. So your right elbow is further out to the side, to the right side than your right hand, actually. So you lift your right elbow, let it be pushed, dragged, pulled to the outside, uh, and then relax again. Now, uh, try the same thing with your, with your left elbow. So you start to lift your left elbow a little bit and let go again. And always fully relax to the floor. Lift your left elbow a little bit and then let go again. And then add the pulling. So you think of your left elbow lifting and being at the same time pulled out a little bit to the side. Just a tiny little bit an idea of being pulled and let go again. Try again, lift your elbow. So you lift your elbow only to reduce the friction with the floor. So your elbow is being pulled out to the left. Actually, you push it, but you think of being pulled out to the left. There's a tiny, teensy little bit of lifting. You can hold it. Think of your breathing and then let go again. Yeah. So you do this between one and 20 times, or maybe just five times. Lift and let go again. Wow, becoming more and more relaxed, less stressed, less anxious. All the worries fade away because we are busy with tiny movements which require our full attention. Then bring your attention to your right knee and start to lift your right knee a little bit. So you activate your right knee. And a tiny, teensy little bit, can't even see it on the camera. Make it so small, some other person would hardly be able to see it, that you're moving at all. You look like from the outside as if you're resting, but you put, bring your attention to your right knee and you lift your right knee and let it back down again on the floor. And also think of your right knee going a little bit to the outside. Just find the ideal, the easiest path of the knee to bend and go a bit to the outside and let go again. And then I would like to give you an image that the right knee doesn't even exist. The right knee is the meeting point of your upper leg and your lower leg, of one bone in the upper leg and two bones in the lower leg. Is it the femur and the fibula and the tibia? Are those the names? What are the names of the muscle? And, and there's a kneecap. And they all meet at the point where you would 
locate your knee with the tendons of the knee, but actually it's the leg. It's like the middle part of the leg is called knee and it can bend. And do that just a little bit. Ah. And it's all wrapped in skin and in a trouser for, for me. For you, maybe it's uh, your PJs. I don't know how you're dressed right now, but it's the right knee that bends a little bit. So maybe you can feel the clothes on your leg or the maybe you have a blanket on top of yourself, maybe. So you can feel that and relax again and just totally relax and take a rest. Feel your breathing, how you're on the floor, then bring your attention to your left knee, which is also very interesting. How do you shift attention in the body? That's something so miraculous. It's a miracle how to shift attention from the right knee to the left knee. What is attention? Is that a substance? Is that a camera? What is it? Bring your attention, shift your attention to your left knee and start to lift your left knee just a tiny little bit and let go again. Lift your left knee and also let it be pulled to the outside a little bit and let go again. Where is the resting position of your legs? Legs. The knee, bend the knee a tiny little bit, let it be pulled to the outside. Of course it's pushing, but after, with the idea of being pulled to the outside and let go again. And every time try to make it a little bit smaller, small, 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 slow, 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 rest, rest, rest. Now we're going further in. Think of your right shoulder, your right shoulder blade, and start to lift your right shoulder blade. The shoulder blade in the back, squeezed in between the torso and the floor. Lift your right shoulder blade, your right shoulder a little bit, and let go again. Just a little bit, and everything, the whole, the, the rest of the body is just relaxed. Your breathing is just in the flow, and you only focus on your right shoulder, the right shoulder blade. So that's a movement to the outside and up, something in between, maybe 45 degrees. Outside and up, it's your shoulder. Don't lift your elbow, it's just the shoulder and the shoulder blade. The shoulder blade maybe sliding at just a tiny little bit on the floor. <sighs> that was an in-breath. And then let go again. And you can do that in your own tempo. Lift and let go. It's like a poor excuse for a lift. It's just a small and tiny little lift. And let go again. Then shift your attention to your left shoulder and lift your left shoulder blade Ooh, and the left shoulder so for me that's a pull to the left and let go again and compare is the left shoulder easier lighter or more stuck and let go again you can change in between the right shoulder and the left shoulder the right shoulder and the left shoulder and let go again just your own tempo, your own ideas, you can play with these movements. Nobody's going to judge you. You're your own judge. You have to answer this question of what is good and what is not good. Because it's your experience, it's your time, it's, it's you. You can make yourself feel comfortable in this way. And then take a short rest. And shift your attention, your focus, your mouse pointer of your body to your right hip. And try to lift your right hip. Try to lift the right hip joints a little bit off the floor. Ha! How would you do that, right? So you could squeeze your right buttocks to lift it, but that's not what I meant. It's like a roll of the pelvis to the left, maybe. 
maybe you need to lean against your right heel of your right foot. Maybe you need to lean against your right shoulder. How do you lift your right hip joint? The right side of your pelvis. And it's just a little bit, so it's not much. So you don't have to do much, actually. It's just a tiny little lift. So that's easy. It should be easy. Once you found it, how to do it. Mm, a little bit lift and a little bit let go very, very slowly. And then take a rest. And then try again, lift it just a tiny little bit and then let go again. And of course, yes, focus on your breathing. Is it a breathe in or a breathe out? Is it unrelated? When do you move? If you can feel it, you could even think of your heart, heartbeat. Is there a connection between the heartbeat and the breath? The heartbeat and the movement? Ooh, that's a difficult question. And always, it only counts when we feel it. We don't need a machine to control ourselves. We just want to have this somatic experience of experience, experiencing ourselves from the inside out, from the inside. I experience ourselves in this world. Think of your left hip joint. Shift your attention to your left hip joint and start, if you haven't already, lift your left hip a little bit and let go again. Lift a little bit and let go again. So there's a lift and a press. If you lift something, something else needs to press more against the floor. wasn't different for the elbow or the head. It's always the same. If you lift something off the floor, something else needs to press stronger into the floor. Because gravity. Now, turn over onto your belly into a prone position, please. Roll over. What will I do with the microphone? Roll over to lie in a prone position and you can you can put your forehead on the floor if that's comfortable you have to find the right position or you, you use you use a cushion so you can position your forehead on the floor Or if that doesn't work, you can turn your head a little bit to the side. This is what works for you. And then, <clears throat> once you're comfortable with your head, your forehead on the floor, your arms next to your head, try to lift your head just a little bit, a tiny little bit off the floor and bring it back down again. It's the same, the same manner as you did in a supine position on your back, just that you're on the front now. So it's a, a little lift, a little tiny lift up and let go again. Don't strain, don't lift too much, don't be tempted to lift too much, just a little bit up and then back down again. And then bring your uh, left hand on your head, on your head, just grab a hair if that's possible, or just have your hand on the head and just guide your head to lift up a little bit. Just come up a little bit and then let down again until your head is fully resting. Try that in your own terms in your own speed a couple of times with your left hand and then let go again sink onto the floor and then bring up your right hand on top of your hand your hand on top of your head and lift your head a little bit and let go again Try that a couple of times. And don't be tempted to do too much. Just a tiny little bit. And then down again. 
and then rest as this is possible. Now you put your arms just somewhere where you have them comfortably and bring your attention to your belly, to your navel, belly button, and try <laughs> yes, try to lift your belly a little bit off the floor. See, mm, how would you do that? Uh, lift the belly, uh, lift the belly off the floor. How is that possible? Mm. Um, maybe with your breathing. Maybe when you breathe out, you can pull in your belly. Mm. And when you breathe in again, you can relax your belly back to the floor and then take a rest. And when you breathe out, and when you breathe in, just on your own terms, see if breathing helps you in any way. Or you lift your pelvis a little bit. So you would have to lean against your knees, lean against the chest. Where do you lean against to make this lift of the belly possible? It's not just the lift of the hip joints. So it's it's not like humping the floor, but you lift, you try to lift your belly and your navel and then bring them back down again. And rest. Then have your arms like a little bit, almost like overhead. Just lengthen your arms up a little bit and just try to lift your right elbow uh, lift the right elbow off the floor a little bit and let your right elbow back down again see how you do that it's very similar to a lesson we did previously where you slide your hand well, it's, it's not a slide of the hand this time but it's a lift of the elbow and back down again. And then try to lift your elbow and your chest. Right elbow and the chest. And leave your head on the floor. See how you do that? Mm, and mm, don't stress. Just be relaxed. Relax back onto the floor and take a rest. Then focus. Bring your attention to your left elbow. Start to lift your left, uh, how do you lift your left elbow? And also, maybe it's a push to the outside. Uh, lift the left elbow a little bit and let it sink down again until it's fully on the floor and take a short rest. And after a short rest, start again. Lift your left elbow and then also lift your chest and back down again. And then just lift your chest, leave your arms on the floor, lift your chest a little bit. And you will see that's different to lifting your belly, your abdomen, your navel. Just lift your chest and you have to lean against your head maybe and your elbows. So there's tension in the whole torso maybe. And then you relax back onto the floor until you're on the floor, just resting there. And take care of your neck if you need to turn the head. Just... Do that, just make yourself comfortable on the floor. Then bring your attention to your legs. Put your toes pointing to the outside and your heels pointing towards each other. So the heels are pointing towards you. And then think of your right knee and try to lift your right knee. Ah. How to lift the right knee? How is that even possible? How is it possible to lift the right knee off the floor without leaning against the toes? Don't lean against the toes like a sprinter. Just lift the right knee off so you have to mm, lean against. You can lean against the in, inside of your foot. You can lean against your left hip joint. You can lean against your chest. 
how do you lift? Yeah, and once you tried it a couple of times, it starts to become easy. Maybe it was almost, maybe it was easy to start with, but maybe it was almost impossible, and then at some point, it starts to become easy. And relax. Shift your attention to your left knee and start to lift your left knee. So maybe you have to change the alignment of your whole body. So there's a little bit of a roll of your pelvis. Hmm. Try that a couple of times. Lift your left knee until that feels easy. And let go again. If you're on your own, you're practicing on your own, you can, of course, switch between your right knee and your left knee and let go again. When you're on your own, you can, pra you can practically do whatever you want because you're in for the somatic experience. For This is a time just for yourself, which you can uh, enjoy. All right, then, please come back onto your back in a supine position. <sighs> okay, back onto the back. So I'm filming this the second time now because my recording device, Apple, failed on me. It lost the entire recording. So I'm re-recording it and I'm fairly relaxed already. Because <laughs> I have to redo the whole thing. I was so angry. But then, of course, we have this lesson to relax. Yes, and that's what we do. Let go of tension, of stress, of worries of the outside world, of all the complicated things we have to go through. We, this is just a time for us, for me, for you. All right, then, let's continue with the lesson. Please get your feet to stand. Feet standing, knees pointing towards the ceiling. And once again, lift your head, like in the beginning, just a tiny little bit. Lift your head, let go again. Just a tiny little bit. Um, might feel a bit different already. And then, with both hands, get hold of your head. Just again, grab your hair or hold the head slightly behind the head, from behind, and help with the hands to lift your head. Help with your hands to lift your head a tiny bit and let go again. And think of becoming longer, of course. Length. Use your eyes. Look that you're coming up straight. That you don't turn your head. You don't twist your head to the side. But you come up straight. Maybe that's too much already. Maybe we need to make it smaller. Or maybe we want to do it bigger. In the original lesson, it's tiny, very tiny movements. Okay, then take a, take a rest again. And have your feet in a good position. Good standing position. Have your feet standing. Don't have them too far away. That doesn't make any sense. And don't have them too close to each other. They should stand on their own, the legs, almost, with the knees poised or balanced on top of your feet. And then, und dann, and then, lift your pelvis just a little bit, just a tiny little bit. So you push against the feet, you push against the floor with your feet, and your pelvis can come up a bit and then go down again and then take a rest and then try again is it with connected to your breathing does your spine become long when you lift your pelvis is there a connection because you need to push somewhere when you lift your pelvis even if it's only the tiniest little bit the weight 
moves onto your feet and onto your back, the middle of your back. And let go again. And now just on the right foot, just push with your right foot to lift the right side of your pelvis wall. So it's a roll of the pelvis, but it's tiny. Maybe it's not even visible, just very small, but ah, it feels big. Uh, of course, I have the advantage of having done this lesson twice today, three times almost, with the preparation. Uh, dun -dun. But you can practice on your own and the next time you do the lesson it will feel stronger for you already. Okay, two. And then with the left foot, push with your left foot against the floor, lift the left side of your pelvis, your left hip joint a bit off the floor slowly and then don't drop it but let it go back to the floor very slowly. All right. And again. And then Push with both feet and lift your pelvis again. Ah, see how that feels? Okay, so we are through with that. Next step, get hold of your head again. Lift your head again. See how that feels like. Wow. I'm already in a different state. <laughs> On a different level of relaxation. Okay, and the last movement is to lift your head and your pelvis at the same time, just a tiny little bit, and think of becoming longer, of lengthening. It's like you become a bowl. Curved, long, relaxed, tension, relaxation, lift and let go again. And then relax fully to the floor. Just stretch out. Feel how you're lying after this movement sequence. This progression of movements. Which lead to being more and more relaxed. Feel, if you can feel like the energy. Is there energy in this planet, in this body? Are we allowed to say that, a rush? I feel very well at, at rest. There's like air inside of me, it's breathing and tingling and it's just beautiful. A beautiful state of relaxation. All right, we are still in a video lesson, so I have to wrap this up. You can enjoy on your own, you can stop the video, you can redo the video, you can practice on your own. But it, as always, at the end of a lesson, we need to come up. We need to come up onto our feet and feel how it is in standing. Get up out into this world, put ourselves out there how to get up. <laughs> All right, let's find a way to get up. <sighs> yes, and then when you're up, just feel how it is. On your feet, in your body, in this world. If you can carry some of this relaxation into the world, into your life, when it's possible, sometimes we need to be, have tension and be aggressive, but after that, we can switch to being relaxed again. Huh? <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for watching, for participating. I hope I was able to give something to you to enhance your life with this kind of movements these lessons, these movement sequences. I wish you a great time practicing on your own, sharing, communicating with other people. 
And uh, let's continue this journey on this planet. Thank you and bye-bye.